Time series data describes data sets where the data points are captured on a timeline and where a key feature is a timestamp. Time series data is produced in two ways. The first is where the data is collected at regular intervals, for example, every second, every minute, or every hour. Examples of this type of data would be weather sensors, heart rate monitors, or energy meters. Alternatively, we have event-driven data where data points happen when they happen. So we might get several at once and then have a gap until we get some more. This would be the case for things like server logs, website click streams, or social media activity. When analyzing time series data, we often slice or group it by different time periods to understand how it changes over time. The ability to analyze changes across time defines time series data. Any data that changes over time belongs in this category. Let's have a look at an example of a bit of time series data. So you can see here we've got some metrics in the middle from a weather sensor. There's then above that some location metadata. And then finally at the top, we've got the all important timestamp. Okay, so now we understand a little bit about what time series data is. Let's talk about how to store it. Whatever database we use needs to efficiently store, manage, and analyze time series data. Let's go through those characteristics in a bit more detail. So due to the high frequency of measurements, time series data grows rapidly. So our database therefore needs to deal with high volumes of data, which is often gonna be generated in short periods of time. Write and query performance are also important. Time series data involves frequent writes and complex aggregation queries. So we therefore need time-based indexing or the ability to sort data by timestamp during ingestion. Time series data often contains repeated or similar values. So storing that data efficiently is important as well. Column-based storage works well as values in the same column are stored next to each other, but we'll also want codecs that allow us to store deltas between values rather than the raw values every time. And finally, we need to be able to run time series analysis over these large volumes of data while filtering by time period. Let's now have a look at some examples of time series database. So the first category is purpose-built time series databases. These databases will have optimized temporal data storage and query mechanisms, maths functions, gap filling, and so on. And databases in this category would be things like InfluxDB, QuestDB, and Prometheus. The next category is extensions to existing relational databases. The big one here is TimescaleDB or Tiger Data, as they're now known, which is an extension of Postgres. And what it does is it adds time-based features like automatic partitioning and time-based indexing to Postgres. And our final category is real-time analytics databases like, for example, ClickHouse. So ClickHouse isn't specifically designed for time series data, but it does work well with this type of data. And when it comes to querying time series data, most of these databases support standard SQL with some extra functions for temporal analysis. So for example, we need time-based window functions, gap filling, interpolation functions, time bucket operations, and then possibly some specialized mathematical functions. We'll finish this video by querying some time series data using the ClickHouse SQL Playground. So this query here shows the number of rides, the average distance, and the average fare by hour and cab type for January the 1st, 2014, and it's using the New York Taxi dataset. The dataset contains 3 billion rows, but to answer that query, it only needed to look at 900,000 rows, and you can see it did it very, very quickly. Let's do one more. So this query calculates the number of cumulative stars for the DeepSeq R1 repository, which came to prominence in January 2025. The table contains almost 10 billion rows, but again, you can see much fewer of those rows. So in this case, 200,000 are scanned in answering the query. If you want to learn more about doing time series data in ClickHouse, you'll want to check out this video next.